scriptures. Pronounced Ibrim, Hebrews chapter 1. Elohim, having old, spoken of many portions and many ways to the fathers by the prophets, has in the last day spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all, through whom also he made the ages, whom, being the brightness of the esteem and the exact representation of his substance, and sustaining all by the world of his power, having made a cleansing of our sins through himself, sat down at the right hand of the greatness on high, as is spoken of in Tehillim, Psalm 110, chapter, verse 1, having become so much better than the messenger, as he has inherited a more excellent name than them. For to which of my messengers did he ever say, You are my son, today I have brought you forth, as is spoken of in Tehillim, Psalm chapter 2, 7. And again, in Shemot, Exodus 7, verse 14, I shall become to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he said, Let all the messengers of Elohim do reverence to him, as is spoken of in Tehillim, Psalm 97, verse 7. And of the messengers, indeed, he says, Who is making his messenger spirit and his servants a flame of fire, as spoken of in Tehillim, Psalm 104, 4. But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever, Lelam Ba'ed. A scepter of straightness is the scepter of your reign. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Because of this, Elohim, your Elohim, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions, as it is spoken of in Tehillim, Psalm 45, verse 6 and 7. And you, Master, did found the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you remain, and they shall all grow old like garments. And like the mantle, you shall fold them up, and they shall be changed. You are the same, and your years shall not fail, as it is spoken of in Tehillim, Psalm 102, verse 25 through 27. And to which of the messengers did he ever say, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet, as spoken of in Psalm Tehillim 110? Are they not all serving spirits sent out to attend those who are about to inherit deliverance, Shua? Hebrews chapter 2. Because of this, we have to pay more attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the words spoken through messengers prove to be firm, and every transgression and disobedience receives a right reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a deliverance, which first began to be spoken by the Master, and was confirmed by those at the herd, Elohim also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Kodesh set-apart spirit, distributed according to his own desire. For if it is not to messengers that he has subjected the world to come concerning which we speak, but somewhere one has witnessed, saying, What is a man that you remember him, or the son of man that you look after him? You have made him a little lower than Elohim. You have crowned him with esteem and respect and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all in subjection under his feet, as it is spoken of in Tehillim chapter 8, verse 4 and 5. For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left none that is not subjected to him, but now we do not yet see all subjected to him. But we do see him who has made for a, a little while lower than the American the messengers, Yahshua, because of the suffering of death, crowned with esteem and respect, that by the favor of Elohim he should taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him, because of whom all and through all were made, in bringing many sons to esteem, to make the prince of their deliverance perfect through suffering. For both he who sets apart and those who are being set apart are all of one. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brothers. As it is spoken of in Tehillim, Psalm chapter 22, verse 22, I shall announce your name to my brothers, and in the midst of the congregation I shall sing praise to you. And again, in Yeshayahu, Isaiah chapter 8, 17 says, I shall put my trust in him. And again, see, I and the children whom Elohim gave me, as spoken of in Yeshayahu, Isaiah 8, 18. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself similarly shared in the same. So by the means of his death, he might destroy him, having the power of death, 
that is the devil, the deliverer who with those who throughout life were held in slavery by fear of death. For doubtless he does not take hold of messengers, but he does take hold of the seed of Abraham. So in every way he had to be made like his brothers in order to become a compassionate and trustworthy Kohen Hagadol, a high priest in matters related to Elohim, to make atonement for the sins of the people. For in what he had suffered, he himself being tried, he is able to help those who are tried. Hebrews, Ibram, chapter 3. Therefore, Kodesh, set apart brothers, partakers in the heavenly calling, closely consider the emissary, and Kohen Hagadol, the high priest of our confession, Mashiach Yahshua, who was trustworthy to him, who appointed him, as also Moshe in all his house. For this one, Echad, has been deemed worthy of more than esteem than Moshe, as much as he who built the house enjoys more respect than the house, for every house is built by someone, but he who built all is Elohim. And Moshe, indeed, was trustworthy in all his house as a servant for a witness of what would be spoken later. But Mashiach, the Messiah, as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the boldness and the boasting of the expectation firm to the end. Therefore, as the Kodesh set apart spirit, Ruach HaKodesh says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tried me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years, therefore, I was grieved with that generation, and said, They always go astray in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. As it is spoken of in Tehillim 95, verse 7 through 11. Look out, brothers, lest there be in any of you wicked heart of unbelief in falling away from the living Elohim. But encourage one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened by the deceivableness of sin. For we have become partakers in Messiah if we hold fast the beginning of our trust firm to the end. While it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion, as spoken of in Tehillim 95, verse 7 through 8. For who, having heard, rebelled? Was it not all that came out of Mitzrayim, Egypt, led by Moshe? And with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter into his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they were unable to enter in because of unbelief. Ibrahim, Hebrews chapter 4. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering into his rest, let us fear, lest any one of you have to come short of it. For indeed the good news was brought to us, as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not having been mixed with belief in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter into that rest, as he, as said, as I swore in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, as spoken again in Tehillim, Psalm 95, verse 11. And yet his works have come into being from the foundation of the world. For somewhere he said, thus about the seventh day of Shabbat, and Elohim rested on the seventh day from all his work, as it is spoken of in Bereshit, Genesis, chapter 2, verse 2. And in this again, if they shall enter into my rest, as it was spoken of in Seth, Psalm 10, 95, verse 11. Since then it remains for some to enter into it, and those who formerly received the good news did not enter in because of disobedience. He again defines a certain day, today, saying through David, so much later, as it has been said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Yahoshua had given them rest, this is Yahoshua, son of Nun, he would not have spoken of another day after that. So there remains a Sabbath keeping for the people of Elohim. For the one having entered into his rest has himself also rested from his work, as Elohim rested from his own. Let us therefore do our utmost to enter into that rest, 
lest anyone follow after the same example of disobedience. For the word of Elohim is living and working and sharper than any two-edged sword cutting through even to the dividing of the being and spirit and of joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all are naked and laid bare before the eyes of him with whom is our account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest, Kohen Hagadol, who has passed through the heavens, Yahshua, the son of Elohim, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest, Kohen Hagadol, unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who was tried in all respects, as we are, apart from sin. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of favor, in order to receive compassion and find favor for timely help. Ibrahim, Hebrews chapter 5. For every priest taken from among men is appointed on behalf of men in matters relating to Elohim, to offer both gifts and offerings for sin, being able to have a measure of feeling for those not knowing and being led astray, since he himself is also surrounded by weakness. On and on account of this he has suffered for sin, as for the people, so also for himself. And no one obtains this esteem for himself, but he who is called by Elohim, even as Eharon also was. So, also the Messiah did not extol himself to become Kohen Hagadol, but it was he who said to him, You are my son, today I have brought you forth, as spoken of in Tehillim, Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. As he also says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Malak Zadok, the righteous king, as it's spoken of in Tehillim 104, excuse me, Tehillim 110, verse 4. Whom in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and petitions with strong crying and tears to him, who was able to save him from death, and was heard because of his reverent fear, though being a son, he learned obedience by what he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the causer of everlasting deliverance to all those who obey him. Having been designated by Elohim a Kohen Hagadol, high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, the king of righteousness, concerning whom we have much to say, and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For indeed, although by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first elements of the words of Elohim. And you have become such as need of milk and not solid foods. For everyone partaking of milk is inexperienced in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But solid food is for the mature, whose senses have been trained by practice to discern both good and evil. Hebrews chapter 6. Therefore, having left the word of the beginning of the Mashiach, let us go on to perfection, not lying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of belief toward Elohim, of the teaching of immersion and the laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and of everlasting judgment. And this we shall do if Elohim indeed permits, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gifts and have become partakers of the Kodesh set apart Ruach, his spirit, and have tasted the good word of Elohim and the power of the age to come, and fall away to renew them again to repentance, having impaled them for themselves, the son of Elohim again, and put him to open shame, for the ground that is drinking the rain, often falling on it, and is bearing plants fit for those by whom it is killed, receives blessings from Elohim. As is spoken of in Bereshit chapter 3, 18, but if it brings forth thorns and thistles, it is rejected, and near to being cursed, and ends up by being burned. But although we speak in this way, beloved, we are persuaded concerning you of better matters which possess deliverance. For Elohim is not unrighteous, to forget your works and labor of love which you show, have shown towards his name, in that you have attended to the Kodesh set apart ones, and still attend. And we desire that each one of you show the same eagerness to the entire confirmation 
of expectation until the end, in order that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who, through belief and patience, inherit the promises. For Elohim having promised, Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, swore by himself, Yahweh, saying, Truly, blessing I have blessed you, and increasing I shall increase you, as it is spoken of in the 22nd chapter, verse 18 of Bereshit, or Genesis. And so after, being patient, he obtained the promise. For men do indeed swear by the one greater, and an oath of confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. In this way, Elohim, resolving to show even more clearly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeableness of his purpose, confirmed it by an oath, covenant, so that by the two unchangeable matters in which it is impossible for Elohim to lie, we might have strong encouragement, we who have fled for refuge, to lay hold of the expectation set before us, which we have as an anchor of the life both safe and firm, and entering into that within the veil, Terakot, where Yahshua has entered as a forerunner for us, having become Kohen Hagadol, the high priest, forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, as it is spoken of in Tehillim, Psalm 110, verse 4. Ibrahim, Hebrews, chapter 7. For this Melchizedek, sovereign of Shalom, priest of the Most High Elohim, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the sovereigns, and blessed him, to whom also Abram gave a tenth of part of all, his name being translated indeed first, Sovereign of Righteousness, and then also Sovereign of Shalom, that is, Sovereign of Peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but having been made like the Son of Elohim, remains a priest for all time. Now, see how great this one was, to whom even the ancestor Abraham gave a tenth of the choicest booty, and truly, those who are the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood, have a command to receive tithes from the people according to the Torah, that is, from their brothers, though they have, have come from the loins of Abraham. However, the one whose genealogy is not derived from them receives tithes from Abraham, and blessed the one who held the promises, and it is beyond all dispute that the lesser is blessed by the better. And here, is, here it is men who die that receive tithes, but there is someone of whom it is witnessed that he lives. And one might say that the, through Abraham, even Levi, who received tithes, gave tithes through Abraham, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met with him. Truly then, if perfection were thought through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people were given the Torah, why was there still need for another priest, Kohanim, to arise according to the order of Melchizedek, and not be called according to the order of Eharon, the Leviticus priesthood? For the priesthood being changed, of necessity there takes place a change of Torah also. For he who, of whom this is said belongs to another tribe, from which no one had attended at a slaughter place. For it is perfectly clear that our master arose from Yehuda, a tribe which Moshe never spoke of concerning priesthood. And this is clearer still if another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become, not according to the Torah of fleshly commands, but according to the power of the endless life for which he does witness, as spoken of in Psalm 110, verse 4. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. For there is indeed a setting aside of the former commands because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the Torah perfected not, but the beginning bringing in of a better expectation through which we draw near to Elohim. And it was not without an oath. For they indeed became priests with, without an oath. But he became priest with an oath by him who swore to him, Yahweh, good he bab he has sworn, and shall not regret. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, as spoken of in Psalm chapter 110, verse 4. But as much as this, Yahshua has become a guarantor of a better covenant, and indeed, those who became priests were many, because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he 
because he remains forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save completely those who draw near to Elohim through him, ever living to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, the Kohanim Hagadol, kind, innocent, undefiled, having been separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens, who does not need, as those high priests who offer up slaughtering offerings day by day, first for his own sin and for those of the people. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. For the Torah appoints as high priests men who have weakness, but the word of the oath which came after the Torah appoints the Son, having been perfected forever. Now, verse er, Ibrahim, Hebrews chapter 8. Now the summary of what we are saying is, we have such a high priest, the Kohen Hagadol, who is seated at the right hand of the throne of greatness in the heavens, and who serves in the Kodesh, set-apart place, and of the true tent, the tabernacle, Mishkan, which Yahweh set up, and not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and slaughters. So it was also necessary for the one, Echad, to have somewhat to offer. For if indeed he were on oath, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the Torah, who serve a copy, a rehearsal, and a shadow of the heavenly, as Moshe was warned when he was about to make the tent, the tabernacle. For he said, See that you make all according to the pattern shown you on the mountain, as it was spoken of in Shemot, Exodus, chapter 25, verse 40. But now he has obtained a more excellent service, inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was constituted on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. For finding fault with them, he says, See, the days are coming, says Yudhei Babhe, Yahweh, when I shall conclude with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda a renewed covenant, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Mitzrayim, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says Yudhei Babhe, because this is a covenant that I shall make with the house of Israel after those days says Yudhei Yahweh, giving my laws in their minds, and I shall write them on their hearts. I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And they shall by no means teach each one his neighbor, and each one his brother, saying, No, Yahweh, because they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, because I shall forgive their unrighteousness, and their sin, and their lawlessness, for without Torah, I shall no longer remember, as it is spoken of in Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah 31, verse 31. By saying renewed, he has made the first old. Now what becomes old and growing aged is near disappearing. Ibrahim, Hebrews chapter 9. Now the first covenant indeed had regulations of worship, and the earthly set apart Kodesh place. For the tabernacle, the tent was prepared, the first part, in which was the lampstand, the menorah, and the table and the showbread, which is called the set-apart place. And after the second veil, the part of the tent, the tabernacle, which is called the most set-apart place, the Kodesh Kodeshim, in which belongs the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant, overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that held the manna and the rod of Aaron that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. And above it were cherubim of esteem, were overshadowing the place of atonement about which we do not now speak in detail. And these having been prepared like this, the Kohanim priests always went into the first part of the tent, accomplishing the service. But into the second part, the Kodesh Kodeshim, the high priest went in alone only once a year, with not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sins of ignorance of the people. The set-apart spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, signifies this, that the way unto the most set-apart Kodesh place was made, not yet made manifest while the first tent was standing, which was a parable for the present time in which both gifts and slaughterings are offered, which are unable to perfect the one serving, as to his conscience. 
only as to foods and drinks and different washings and fleshly regulations imposed until a time of setting matters straight. But Messiah, having become a high priest, a Kohanim Hagadol, of the coming good matters, through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered in the most set-apart place once for all, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, having obtained everlasting redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the defiled, sets, sets apart the cleansing of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of the Messiah, who through the everlasting Ruach Spirit offered himself unblemished to Elohim, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living Elohim? And because of this, he is the mediator of a renewed covenant, so that death, having taken place for redemption of the transgressions, under the first covenant, those who are called might receive the promise of the everlasting inheritance, for which there is a covenant. It is necessary for the death of the covenanted one to be established. For a covenant over those dead is firm, since it is never valid while the covenanted one is living. Therefore, not even the first covenant was instituted without blood. For when, according to the Torah, every command had been spoken by Moshe to all the people who took the blood of calves and goats with water, and scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself, and all the people, saying in Shemot, Exodus chapter 24, verse 8, This is the blood of the covenant which Elohim commanded you. And in the same way he sprinkled with the blood both the tent and all the vessels of the service. And according to the Torah, almost all is cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. It was necessary, then, that the copies of the heavenly ones should be cleansed with these, but the heavenly ones themselves with better slaughter offerings than those. For Messiah has not entered into a set-apart place made by hands, figure of the true, but into the heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of Yahweh Elohim on our behalf, not that he should offer himself often, as high priest enters into the set-apart place, year by year, with blood not his own. For if so, he would have to suffer often, since the foundation of the world. But now, he has appeared once for all, at the end of the age, to put away sin by the offering of himself. And as it awaits men to die once, and after this, the judgment, so also the Messiah, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, as it is spoken of in Yeshiyahu, Jeremiah 53, verse 12, shall appear a second time, apart from sin, to those waiting for him unto deliverance. Shua. Ibrahim, Hebrews chapter 10. For the Torah, having a shadow of the good matters to come, have, and not the image itself of the matters, was never able to make perfect those who draw near with the same slaughter offerings which they offer continually year by year. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered? Because those who served once cleansed would have had no more consciousness of sin. But in those offerings is a reminder of sin year by year. For it is impossible for blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. Therefore, coming into the world, he says, in Tehillim 40, verse 6 through 8, Slaughterings and meal offerings you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In ascending offerings and offerings for sin you did not delight. Then I said, See, I come. In the roll of the book it has been written concerning me to do your desire, O Yahweh Elohim. The saying above, a slaughter and meal offering, and ascending offerings, and offerings of sin you did not desire, nor delight in, which are offered according to the Torah. Then he said in Psalm 40, verse 8, See, I come to your desire, O Elohim. He takes away the first to establish the second. By the desire we have been set apart through the offering of the body of Yahshua HaMashiach once for all. And indeed, every priest stands day by day doing service and repeatedly offering the same slaughter offerings, which are never able to take away sins. But he, having offered one slaughter offering 
for the sins for all time sat down at the right hand of Yahweh Elohim, waiting from that time onward until his enemies are made a footstool for his feet, as spoken of in Psalm Tehillim 110, verse 1. For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are being set apart. And the set-apart spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, also witnesses to us. For after having said before, This is the covenant that I shall make with them after those days, says yud heh vav Yahweh, giving my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I shall write them. As it's spoken of in Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah 31, verse 33, And their sins and their lawlessness I shall remember no more, as it's spoken of in Yirmiyahu 31, 34. Now, where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer a slaughter offering for sin. So, brothers, having boldness to enter into the Kodesh, set apart place, by the blood of Yahshua, by a new and living way which he instituted for us, through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of Elohim, let us draw near with a true heart in completeness of belief, having our hearts sprinkled from a wicked conscience, and the, our bodies washed with clean water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our expectation without yielding, for he who promised is trustworthy. And let us be concerned for one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging, and so much more as you see the day coming near. For if we sin purposely, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, we no longer remain a slaughter offering for sins, but some fearsome anticipation of judgment and a fierce fire which is about to consume the opponents, as spoken of in Yeshiyahu, Jeremiah 26, verse 11. Anyone who has disregarded the Torah of Moshe dies without compassion on the witness of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think shall he deserve who has trampled the son of Elohim underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was set apart as common, and insulted the Ruach, the spirit of favor? For we know him who has said, Vengeance is mine, I shall repay, says Yahweh. And again, in Deborim, Deuteronomy 32, verse 35 and 36, Yahweh, yud heh vav shall judge his people. It is a fearsome to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. But remember the former days when, after you were enlightened, you endured a great struggle with suffering. On the one hand, you were exposed to reproach and pressures, and on the other hand, you became sharers with those who were so treated. For you sympathized with me in my chains, and you accepted with joy the seizure of your possessions, knowing that you have a better and lasting possession for yourself in the heavens. Do not then lose your boldness, which has great reward, for you have not need of endurance, so that when you have done the desire of Elohim, you receive the promise, as spoken of in Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. For yet a little while, he who is coming shall come and shall not delay, but the righteousness shall live by belief. But if anyone draws back, my being has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to destruction, but of belief to the preservation of life. Hebrews, Abrim, chapter 11. And belief is the substance of what is expected, the proof of that which is not seen. For by this the elders obtained witness. By belief we understand that the ages were prepared by the word of Elohim, so that when what is seen was not made of what is visible. By belief, Havel, Abel, offered to Elohim a greater slaughtering offering than that of Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, Elohim witnessing of his gift, and through it, having died, he still speaks. By belief, Hanuk was translated so as not to see death, and was not found because Elohim had translated him, as it is spoken of in Bereshit, chapter 5, verse 24, and the book of Hanuk. For before his translation, he obtained witness that he pleased Elohim. But without belief, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to Elohim has to believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. 
By belief, Noah, having been warned of what was yet unseen, having feared, prepared an ark to save his house, through which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to belief. By belief, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he was about to receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. By belief, he sojourned and wandered in the land of promise as a stranger, dwelling in tents with Yitzhak and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking for the city, having foundations, whose builder and maker is Elohim. By belief also, Sarah herself was established, enabled and conceived seed. And she bore a child when she was well past the normal age, because she deemed him trustworthy who had promised it. And so, from one, and him as good as dead, were born as numerous as the stars of heaven, and countless as the sands which is by the seashore, as promised in Bereshit chapter 15, verse 5, and also chapter 22, verse 7. In belief, all these died, not having received the promise, but seeing them from a distance, welcomed and embraced them, and confessed that they were aliens and strangers on the earth. For those who speak this way make it clear that they seek a fatherland. And yet, if they had indeed kept remembering that place from which they had come out of, they would have had the chance to return. But now they long for a better place, that is, a heavenly. Therefore Elohim is not ashamed to be called their Elohim, for he has prepared a city for them. By belief, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Yitzhak, and he who had received the promises offered up his only brought forth son, Yitzhak, of whom it was said, In Yitzhak your seed shall be called. That was spoken of in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 21, verse 12. Reckoning that Elohim was able to raise, even from the dead, from which he received him back, as a type, by belief, Yitzhak blessed Jacob and Esau concerning that which was to come. By belief, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Yosef, and did, did reverence on the top of his staff. By belief, Yosef, when he was dying, made mention of the outgoing of the children of Israel, and gave orders concerning his bones. By belief, Moshe, having been born, was hidden three months by his parents, because they saw he was a comely child, and was not afraid of the sovereign's command of Pharaoh. By belief, Moshe, having become great, refused to be called the son of the daughter of Pharaoh, choosing rather to be afflicted with the people of Elohim than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a time, deeming the reproach of Messiah greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, Mitzrayim, for which he was looking to the reward. By belief, he left Mitzrayim, not fearing the wrath of the sovereign, for he was steadfast by seeing him, who is invisible by belief, and performed the Pesach, the Passover, and the sprinkling of blood. Lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By belief, they passed through the Red Sea as dry land. And when the Mitzrayim, the Egyptians, tried it, they were drowned. By belief, the walls of Jericho fell, having been surrounded for seven days. By belief, Rahab, the prostitute, the whore who did not perish, with those who did not believe, having received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to relate of Gideon, and of Barok, and Sham Shimshion, and Yatzas, also that of David, and Shemuel, and all the prophets, who through belief overcame reigns, who work righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, because mighty in battle put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others who tortured were tortured, not accepting release, to obtain a better resurrection. And others had tri trials of mockings and floggings and more, of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were tried, they were sawn in two. They were slain with the sword. They went about in sheepskins, in goatskins, being in need, afflicted and mistreated, of whom the world is not worthy. 
wandering in deserts and mountains and caves and the holes of the earth, the crevices, and having obtained witness through the belief, all these did not receive the promise, Elohim, having provided what is better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Ibrahim, Hebrews chapter 12. We too, then, having so great a cloud of witnesses all around us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race set before us, looking at the prince and perfecter of our belief, Shar Shalom Yahshua, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the stake, the execution, having despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh Elohim. For consider him who endured such opposition from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and faint in your lives. You have not yet resisted into blood, striving against me. And you have forgotten the appeal which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the discipline of Yahweh, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For whom Yahweh loves, he disciplines, and flogs every son who he receives, as it is spoken of in Mishni, or Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. If you endure discipline, Elohim is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have become sharers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Moreover, we indeed had fathers of our flesh disciplining us, and we paid them respect. Shall which much, not much, rather be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed discipline us for a few days as seemed best to them, but he does, does it for our profit, so that we might share his apartness. And indeed, no discipline seems pleasing at the time, but grievous. But afterwards, it yields the shalom, peaceable fruit of righteousness, dadak, to those who have been trained by it. So, strengthen the hands which hang down and the weak knees, as spoken of in Yeshiyahu 35, verse 3, and make straight paths for your feet, lest the lame be turned aside, but instead to be healed. Pursue peace, shalom, with all. And pursue kodeshness, pursue apartness, without which no one shall see our master. See to it that no one falls short of the favor of Elohim, that no root of bitterness spring up causes trouble, by which many become defiled. Lest there be anyone who whores or profanes one like Esau, who for a single meal sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wished to inherit the blessings, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance. Though he sought it with tears, for you have not drawn near to a mountain, touched and scorched with fire, and to blackness and darkness and storm. The sound of a great shofar, a trumpet, and the voice of words, so that those who hear, heard it begged that the, no further word should be spoken to them. For they could not bear what was commanded, as it's spoken of in Shemot, Exodus chapter 19, verse 12, If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned, or shot through with an arrow. And so fearsome was the sight that Moshe said, I exceedingly fear and tremble, as he spoke of in Deborim, Deuteronomy 9, verse 19. But you have drawn near to the Mount Sion, and to the city of the living Elohim, to the heavenly Yerushalayim, to myriads of Melachim messengers, to the entire gathering and assembly of the firstborn having been enrolled in heaven, and to Elohim the judge of all, and to the spirits of righteousness men made perfect, and to Yahshua the mediator of a new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, which speaks better than the blood of Havel. Take heed not to refuse the one speaking, for if those did not escape who refused the warning on earth, much less we who turn away from him from heaven, whose voice shook the earth then, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more shall I shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. And that was spoken of in the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verse 6. And this, yet once more, makes clear the removal of what is shaken as having been made, so that the unshaken matters might remain. 
Therefore, receive an unshakable ring. Let us hold the favor through which we serve Yahweh Elohim, pleasing with reverence and awe. For indeed, our Elohim is a consuming fire, as spoken of in Deborim, Deuteronomy 4, verse 24. Ibrahim, Hebrews, chapter 13. Let the heavenly love continue in brotherly love. Do not forget to receive strangers, for by so doing, some have enter unwittingly entertained Malachim, the, the messengers. Remember that the prisoners, as if chained with them, and those being mistreated, since you yourselves also have, are in the body. Let marriage be respected by all, and the bed be undefiled. But Elohim shall judge those who whore and adulterers. Let your way of life be without the love of silver, and be satisfied with what you have. For he himself has said in Deuteronomy Deborim 31 verse 6, I shall never leave you nor forsake you. So that we boldly say, Yahweh is my helper. I shall not fear what man shall do to me, as spoken of in Tehillim 1 18 verse 6. Remember those leading you, who spoke the word of Elohim to you. Consider our outcome and their behavior and imitate their belief. Yahshua, Messiah, is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Le'olam Va'ed. Do not born about by various and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be established by favor, not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. We have a slaughter place from which those serving the tent have no authority to eat. For the bodies of those beasts, whose blood is offered into the set-apart place by the high priest for sin, are burned outside the camp. And so, Yahshua also suffered outside the gates of Jerusalem, to set apart the people with his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach, for we have no lasting city here, but we seek the one coming. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a slaughter offering of praise to Elohim Yahweh. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to Hashem, his name. And do not forget to do good and to share. For with such slaughter offerings, Elohim is pleased. Obey those leading you and be subject to them, for they watch for your lives, as having to give an account. Let them do so with joy, and not groaning, for what would be of no advantage to you. Pray for us, for we trust that we have a good conscience, desiring to behave well in every way. But I particularly encourage you to do this, that I might be restored to you sooner. The Elohim of Peace, who brought forth up our master, Yahshua, from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make you perfect in every good work, to do his desire, working in you, what is pleasing in his sight, through Yahshua, Messiah, to whom be the esteem forever and ever, Le'olam ba'ed, Umein. And I call upon you, brothers, bear with the word of encouragement, for I have written to you in few words. Know that Brother Timotheus has been released, with whom I shall see you, if he comes shortly. Greet all those leading you, and all the set-apart ones, Kodesh, those from Italy, greet you. Favor be 